Hi right, guys, in this video we're going to look at a numerical vector y and we're going to learn how to sort it, how to rank it, and how to order it. So three functions here. So we'll do them in this order and um, we'll stick to this very small data set here uh, or numerical vector so that we can kind of clearly see what these three do because they do slightly uh, different different things, although they seem like they um, they would be used in very similar circumstances. Okay, so first off, let's make sure that y is um, properly coded as a numerical vector. We can do that by checking its class. Yes, and in fact, it's numeric. Okay, so looking at y, let's first learn how to sort. I feel that's the simplest of these. So we just use sort, and we basically get the y vector put into or ascending order and if we need it in descending order we could wrap sort with reverse or rev and we'll get descending order so that's pretty straightforward <coughs> what about rank let's rank y well what rank does is it looks at each element in the order that it appears and ranks it in terms of its ascending position or its ascending order position something like this basically 4.5 is the smallest number so it's the first rank 6.2 is the second biggest number so it's the second rank 8.6 the third biggest number it's third rank and 9.3 is the largest so the fourth and so we get one, three, four, two. So that's how rank works. Okay, so these are these are positions in the vector, whereas sort gives you the actual vector reordered, either ascending or descending. Okay. <coughs> now, finally, the for me at least, the most difficult to understand was order. So let's first order y and see what this is doing. So order does something, as you can see, obviously it's different than rank uh, compared to these two. So obviously it's doing something different. Um, but with this little tiny vector here, we can kind of understand what's going on here. So first off, what this is doing is it's telling us the position of the first, um, again, ascending. So by default, all these were treating... Um, the process of sorting in an ascending fashion. Okay, so that's no different here for order. So what order is doing is it's saying, what's the position? Either one, two, three, four. So these are the positions of these elements in this vector y. What position is the uh, smallest number, the minimum? Let's start with that. So we see obviously that 4.5 is the smallest number. Its position is one. We get one. Then it goes on to what's the second biggest number? What's the position of the second biggest number? And so we know it's 6.2. The position of 6.2 is four. So that's how we get four. And then what's the position of the third largest number? 8.6, the position is 2, that's how we get 2. And finally, what's the position of the largest number of the, of the little vector that we have here? 9.3 is in position 3, and so that's what we get when we use the order function. Okay, so slightly different from rank. Okay, now if we were to, if you fully understand that, you would be able to sort the you would be able to get the same results that you got from sort up here by using um, the order function inside the square brackets. So you see we get 4.5, 6.2, 8.6, 9.3. Same result as what sort gave us up here. Okay, So this just helps you to better understand how um, the order function relates back to the sort function. Now, the order function becomes quite useful when you want to sort um, a data set um, which has maybe a data frame that has many vectors and you want to sort it based on one 
particular vector you want to sort the entire data set so sort won't exactly do that for you or at least that's not the best way to do it so let me pull up a slightly more realistic data set here <coughs> so let's look at the data cars and quickly let's look at the structure of cars there's two variables here they're both numeric right and we have 50 observations to work with so let's take a look at cars um, perhaps let's look at the first uh, 15 observations okay uh, or 10 let's try to fit this all on our screen so actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna subset this so let me call this X and let me make X cars let me go from 1 to 10 so I'm only looking at the first 10 not only am I not looking at the rest but I'm also just eliminating them so I've created this new data frame called X let's just quickly look at the structure of X so it's basically the cars data frame just subset it we only have 10 observations now so now I could just look at this in one screen and focus on sorting so obviously we see here unfortunately that this speed variable seems to be sorted uh, but the distance variable is not sorted okay so maybe we can play with that so first off we obviously know we can sort either of these uh, alone by using the sort uh, function and that's no surprise that we get um, this column here in a ascending order so that's fine that's nothing new um, but what if I want to sort the entire data frame both of the columns according to distance so basically uh, I want um, for example this is the largest distance so this should show up last not only 34 but the whole row here should show up as the last row because I want to sort based on distance ascending first okay so how do I do that well X and in the square brackets I want both columns, so I'll leave that blank. Here, I want to order based on what? Based on distance. <coughs> and as we see, distance is in nice order, as we would expect, ascending order. But not only that, the speed that went along with each of these distances also got taken with it. In other words, we didn't just sort this alone and speed stayed stationary. The speed went with the distance as it should because this is bivariate observations here, right? So for example, up here, 3410 should be the last row because 34 was the largest distance and I sorted ascending based on distance and the the speed for 34 was 10, so no surprise that I have 10, 34 at last. And the smallest distance was 2, so that stayed there, along with the speed of 4, so no surprise there. Okay, so that's, that's uh, how you would sort a data set. And even if this had uh, 100 columns, all the columns would get sorted correctly using the order of um, in this case, I use distance, but you could arbitrarily use any um, any feature or variable to do this sorting. Okay, so um, I'm sure there's a, a lot of other um, ways you can think of using this in more sophisticated ways, but the most common thing oftentimes you want to do is sort a data frame. And so having a good handle on the sort, order, and rank functions helps you pretty much <clears throat> do any kind of sorting that you might uh, desire. So I hope this was helpful. Be sure to subscribe and check out uh, tons of other our tutorial videos I've posted on my channel. Till next time, have a great day.